Yo, what's going on crew? In today's episode, I wanna share with you one hidden component that might be screwing up your diabetes management. I'm gonna show you how to isolate it, identify it, and of course, make some new implementation to fix it for good, all right? And it's of course coming alongside a new story of some travels I had last week and how my blood sugars responded not so nicely. So, without any further ado, let's get into our theme song. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. All right, crew, so last week, as I mentioned, I actually had a trip, and uh, I flew across the nation, went over to Tennessee. I was in Nashville, Tennessee for uh, just under a week, and uh, it was a fun trip. It was a business conference, went out there to, to meet some people and have some great discussions, learn some new things about how I can reach more people and help out with more diabetes management. Uh, and through that process, I actually got a chance to actually meet, for the first time, one of my team members, someone I've been working with for almost six months, Finally had our first face-to-face -face and it was a great time to uh, plan out some really exciting stuff we've got coming up for all of FTF Warrior, our new programs and uh, all that great stuff, which if you're not familiar with, I can talk about that later in today's episode. But first I want to talk about my blood sugars and traveling with diabetes and how they did not cooperate as well as I would have liked. Now, before I get any further, what I want you to do right now is if the topic of traveling and diabetes and you know how to not only manage blood sugars but also like what to pack, if that interests you and you're watching on YouTube, drop a comment down below with the word travel. Just type travel if you want a video on that topic. And if there's enough people, then I'll make sure that I cover that as well. But for today, with that trip, um, one of the things that I did to try to manage blood sugars as I was out there is to try to keep a couple of different key components consistent. But even with me putting out my, my best foot forward, I still ran into some frustrating blood sugars this one night and it came out, um, or I should say it, it led me into some frustration because I thought I was doing everything correctly. And uh, you, maybe you've felt something similar where you, you're doing the right things and you feel like you're gonna get your blood sugars to cooperate and then they still go out of whack and it just turns into this nightmare of a situation. <laughs> I mean, hands up if that's ever happened to you before. Uh, but with this unique situation, I ended up seeing blood sugars so high that I, I started wondering if something was wrong with the insulin itself. And I, I ended up hitting blood sugars that were higher than I've seen in multiple years. And as you'll see on the screen in just a second, I hit 280. Oh, I know, it was a rough night for me. It took hours to bring that back down. And as I was looking into you know, my CGM graphs and my habits, my decisions with my diabetes management, asking myself what could have led into this situation, I realized an important component of that entire thought exercise that I was putting myself through. And that was not only analyzing blood sugars, but analyzing the subconscious decisions that we make, the routines, the habits, the things that have been built in for so long that we've stopped to question them and stopped to identify them, right? And so I actually uh, spent some time on our, our recent coaching call with my higher level coaching clients in the, the type one diabetes space. And we, we tore apart <laughs> my decisions on that trip uh, for lack of a better term, I actually had my clients kind of pull apart what I did and try to identify what went wrong, what could be changed, how can we improve upon it. It was an incredible opportunity for them to play coach, essentially. I kind of flipped the table on them. I was like, all right, how would you coach me? What questions would you ask? What would you recommend based on these blood sugars, based on this situation? And I gave them the whole story and uh, they, they impressed me with their answers. It was fantastic. They all had a variety of different questions. They got it right and they did actually figure out what went wrong um, and the choices that I made. But what was interesting and what I actually spent some time discussing on that coaching call with them was the impact of habits in our lives and how that, the habits that we've built into our lives, especially as routine, as they become subconscious decisions that we're maybe not aware of on a day-to-day -day basis, can impact our blood sugars more than many other things that we put more of a pressure on, more of a priority in our lives. 
And this specific habit, we won't get too deep into the specific example of that day that led me into a 280 blood sugar. Oof, still, it hurts to think about that. Uh, but what I do wanna to cover today is the idea that literally, literally, every single blood sugar that we see is a response of something. And I think that far too often, we think that with our blood sugars, they're just crazy, right? They're just, every once in a while, you just kind of throw it away like that didn't count. I have no idea what happened. So, you know, that's just diabetes. That's just how it is. But the reality of it is, we actually can control more than what you were taught, right? It's not just an insulin to carb ratio. You know this. There's the pre-bolus. There's did you count your carbs? There's the total activity in that day. There is are you dehydrated? Are you stressed? Did you get enough sleep? Is your gut microbiome in order? There are so many components to this. And the realization that comes alongside that, of course, is that we hold a lot more of the power than we were first told we actually have the opportunity to impact our diabetes management on a much higher level than we were initially led on, right? And the unfortunate side of this for some people is that they also have the realization that they are responsible for the blood sugars that they see. And of course, that 280 blood sugar that I saw, I am now aware because of the years of research that I've put into type 1 diabetes, uh, and of course, the hundreds of people that I've coached through this disease, I am aware that I did something that led into the 280 point blood sugar, right? It didn't just happen magically. It didn't just appear out of nowhere and I have no responsibility for it. I made some decisions somewhere along the way that led into that blood sugar happening. It is not by random choice or random chance that that happened, right? Which also means it is now my responsibility to analyze and dissect that situation to figure out what happened, what choice that I made that led into that so that I can learn from it and change it in the future. And here's the rub. People who think that diabetes is random are pushing off responsibility, which then lets me know they will never have great control because if they push off the responsibility, that also means that they are letting go of any chance of getting control because they won't learn from their mistakes, right? If you um, refuse to acknowledge that you were texting and driving and that's why you crashed, you're gonna think you just crashed randomly. Like car crashes just happen. It's just part of life, right? And you'll never learn to stop texting while you're driving because you didn't pick apart your habits, you didn't analyze that situation in an effect or in an effort to learn from your mistakes. So if you don't learn that texting while driving is bad and that's why you had your car crash, you may never learn to stop texting and driving. You may crash car after car after car, year after year after year and never figure out why. That's the danger in not picking apart your diabetes management and looking for what choices you made. What do you have control over that could potentially save you from future destruction? Had I not learned from that 280 blood sugar that night, I wouldn't have made a change that night that the following night would have fixed, right? So the following night, I made a slightly different decision based on the information that I gained. I dissected that situation, analyzed it, figured out what went wrong. I made an adjustment and the following night went smoothly. I was able to enjoy my night, actually get to bed on time, not have to stay up and take insulin and go for a walk, so it was terrible. If you never isolate the habits, the routines, the pieces that you can take responsibility for, you will never know what to take action on. And you may not know that you can take action on, right? Just again, back to the car accident. If you crash your car and it's because you were texting and driving, but you uh, either refuse to analyze a situation to recognize, of course, that texting and driving is what led you to crash, or on the other side of that, you know it was texting and driving, but you refuse to take responsibility for it, right? You're like, okay, yeah, I was texting and driving, but it was also windy outside. The wind must have caused that. No, that's not what caused it. It was the texting and driving. You know, maybe you don't count your carbs and you're like, oh, well, no, my carb count was probably pretty close. I think it's because somebody snuck in some extra carbs into my meal without me knowing it. That's definitely the case. No, you have to isolate the habit and then take responsibility for the blood sugars that you see. Does that make sense? I really hope this is, this is breaking through some barriers. These habits that we've built, 
We have to identify them and then take responsibility for the results so that we can take action to fix it at its source instead of repeating the same mistakes over and over and over again. There's a reason I haven't seen a blood sugar that high in years. It's because anytime it gets anywhere outside of the range that I set, I analyze it, I go, okay, what went wrong? What can I learn from? It is my fault, right? I messed up somewhere because I missed something. That's why my blood sugars didn't respond perfectly and I'm gonna take action to fix it. So what I want you to do today is look at your blood sugars, look at your CGM graphs, your finger stick results, your, your spreadsheets, whatever you use to collect your data with blood sugars and ask yourself, what am I missing? And what can I take responsibility for? What habits, routines, subconscious decisions am I missing? What have I not seen that's causing blood sugar to, to go out of range? And what can I take action on and take responsibility for today so that tomorrow goes a bit smoother? All right, I hope this makes sense. We could go off into a deep dive. I told my clients as well on our, our recent coaching call that uh, we could do a whole series just on habit forming and how the habits that we have from years ago have been developed into these subconscious patterns of decision making that we're not even fully conscious of and we have to be more mindful of that and there's just a whole branch of a conversation that to be had there. But for now, look at what you might be missing. Okay, look at where the blood sugars are doing things you don't want them to be doing figure out what decision was there that maybe you might not have been aware of on surface level and how can I take responsibility for this? Not, is this my fault? Just to, again, it's my fault. How is it my fault? And how can I take action? All right. And if you don't know about, you know, how is it my fault or how can I take action or, you know, what these habits look like or the question that I get oftentimes is I know I have the habit, but I don't know what habit should be there or how to replace this or how to fix it because I don't know all the things that you know, Matt, like, uh, you know, the different ways that activity can impact blood sugar, the different types of foods, different types of meals that require different pre-boluses, different dosing strategies, whether it's a split bolus or a dual wave or a square wave or extended bolus. You have to know these things in order to perfect it, of course, but the first step is you identifying the habits or even just recognizing the possibility that it could be your fault, right? Me saying it's my fault, how can I fix it, empowers me to make these changes. I'm getting a little bit off track here, but I wanna give you this last piece. There's this thing called the external locus of control versus the internal locus of control. If you have an external locus of control, you, that means that you believe that the world happens to you. You believe in fate, nothing you do matters because everything's just gonna happen versus an internal locus of control means that I have power over my life and the actions that I take. Therefore, I take responsibility for the results that I experience. In other words, you recognize that you create the outcomes in your life. If you wanna go lose weight, you're gonna eat right and go exercise versus waiting for somebody else to fix it or just saying, oh, this is just how life is. You need to have an internal locus of control if you expect to see results with your diabetes. You cannot wait for your doctor to fix you because they won't, right? They're not you. <laughs> they only see you once every three to six months. You have to have an internal locus of control. Google that if you want more info on it, all right? Once you do establish that, take responsibility and take action. Those are your key steps for today. And again, if you want to tie this into diabetes and having more specific knowledge on how you can make these changes that are lasting, that yield predictable and consistent blood sugars, you got to go check out the training. If you have not seen it yet, it's completely free to watch. I guarantee it will spark some memories. It's a new perspective of looking at your diabetes. It'll open up new opportunities for better control, more flexibility and freedom with your lifestyle and overall just healthier and longer living. All right, now that training, go find it at diabetesinaction.com. Take action. Go figure out those habits, those routines that you've put yourself into. Take responsibility for your own life because it will empower you to level up your diabetes management, but also just your quality of life overall. So head over to diabetesinaction.com. Take action on this stuff. Do not sit on it because your life is in your hands. All right, I'll see you over there. Have an amazing rest of your day and keep up the fight.